I'll be taking you all to a storehouse in the bales. Leave anything you don't need behind. Come on, run like the wind. You are, Sid. Um, thanks so much for coming. The, uh, ruins are just over there, as is the creature I told you about, I'd imagine. Would you, uh, would you mind? Of course. I'll be right back. Anybody home? This must be our unwanted visitor. Time to go.
The things I do for you, Mid. Sid! Oh, thank goodness you're safe. You shouldn't have any trouble now. Indeed. Well, don't let us keep you. We'll, um, see that everything is transported safely back to the hideaway. All right. I'll let Mid know you're on your way. Seen troops of mass out every has recovered the material for the helm. She'll be along shortly. Excellent. Another job well done. And just one remaining. Right. Right, the shielding. This one's a bit of a bugger. How so? The plating's enough to stop the engines going pop, but those things will still be spitting out enough fire to set the rest of the ship ablaze. Which is why you need proper shielding. A prison for the dragon's breath that's blazing away inside. I thought a triple thick layer of tempered steel might do it. Or more of the stuff that the Fallen use, but they'd both be too heavy. The helm and the plating are bulky enough as it is. Add any more weight and the whole ship would be at the bottom of the briny before we'd even started. I need something light. But I've wrapped my brains and I just can't think what I'd do it. Well, if I were in need of obscure knowledge, I know whose counsel I would seek. Harpocrates. Tomes? Yeah, well... I'd thought of that, obviously. I've got all the details written down here. Can you take this to him? See what he makes of it? Right away. Hippocrates, do you have a moment? For you, Clive? Always. Well, actually, it's for mid this time. Could you take a look at this? Hmm. <laughs> Shielding for a mithril engine? Whatever will that girl think of next? What are these notes around the edges? She has some specific requirements for the materials. The shielding needs to be able to resist extreme heat on the inside, and yet remain cool enough on the outside not to set the ship alight, while also being light enough not to sink it. As you can imagine, she's struggling to find anything that meets her needs. I see. I wondered if you might know of a solution, 
Or if you might be able to search the records for one. Hmm. Perhaps it is not a different material she requires, but a different approach. What do you mean? Consider the lake we have made our home. Its blighted waters eat away far more quickly than fresh water or even brine, at timber and steel alike. And yet, we have made a home here from those very materials nonetheless. We have. But Bardolf must varnish every board twice over to keep it from rotting. And Obelus complains that without a constant supply of... <sighs> pitch. I see. Early Gregorian histories speak of a preparation known as Moondew. It is said to be able to resist even the most ferocious flames. Before the dragoons tamed the worms and wyverns of the realm, nobles would daub their castle walls with it in order to guard against dragonfire. So if we could recreate it... It might be applied to some material or other in order to provide the protection it requires. As to how best to apply it and to what material, Perhaps Bardolf and Obelus might be of assistance. I shall speak to them and see what wisdom they might have to offer. If you would be so kind as to procure the necessary ingredients, I shall discuss the specifics of how it might be most effectively put to use with our two friends. The knowledge of the past may yet prove useful to we of the modern era. Thank you, Harpocrates. And since you're asking others to help you, perhaps I should too. So you need a hand, do you? We do. I'll be heading to market for the ingredients we need. I could do with some help. And some company, too. The other can assist me in researching how best to prepare the shielding itself. Can we count on your aid? Always. Well, if Jill's game... Thank you. I am sure either of these fine young minds would prove indispensable in my research. I leave the decision as to who will go with whom in your capable hands, Clive. So, Clive, have you made your decision? Who will accompany you on your little excursion? All right. So, what are we fetching? I have taken the liberty of preparing a list. Here. Garlic? Conch shells? Are you sure this is the right list? Looks like the ingredients for someone's supper. Though these items may seem mundane, they have potent effects that are rarely exploited. Effects for which they were once highly prized. So much so, in fact, that they were harvested almost to extinction. Hence, Moondews having fallen from favor. Now, of course, they can be obtained with ease. You should be able to find everything you need at the market in Northreach. Well, isn't that convenient? I was hoping to be able to make a trip over that way sometime soon. Need to speak to an old acquaintance. I'll meet you there. All right. Stay safe. See you later, Clive. Good luck with your research. My knowledge is yours. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. You wish to study the tomes? You are always welcome, Clive. for you.
I do like a customer who knows what he wants. Keep them pilgers nice and chill. Need to stock up on I'm these. Use. There you are, Talia. Ah, and there you are. We shouldn't have any problems finding what we need in a place like this. But if time is of the essence, perhaps we should split up. Take a few items each. All right. What shall I look for? Let's see now. Why don't you take the garlic and the peppy or nuts? Meet me by the gate when you've got them. Buy, sell, or be gone. And? How the hell is anyone supposed to afford that price? Any friend of the innkeeper is a friend of mine. That should do it. Hopefully Ty is finished too. Well, did you find everything? I did. Here. Garlic and pepio nuts. Job done. We should get this back to Tomes, then. He'll be waiting. Boss, we're not in too much of a rush, are we? Quick chat. Do you know, I think this is the very first time we've been out on an errand together. <laughs> I think you might be right. In all the years since you and that scowl of yours first appeared, you haven't invited me out once. For shame. Well, it seemed long overdue. And you did say you had some shopping to do. I was hoping to restock my supplies of herbs and liniment, yes. You and Jill alone burned through them like wildfire. No luck, though. My usual supplier's not here, and I refuse to pay the prices these gougers charge. I'll ask Karen when we get back. What is it? Oh, just memories. I came here with Sid once, shopping for supplies, just like today. And just like today, I came away empty-handed. Sid even said he'd speak to Karen for me when we got back. Has it really been five years? I remember it as if it was yesterday. Hold on. Does that mean it's been five years since we met? Feels a lot longer. It does. In a good way, of course. Thank you, Tyre. For what? For everything. I just want you to know that all you've done for us or you still do. It's appreciated. Do you think I'd stick around if I thought it wasn't? But in the spirit of sharing and caring... ...you're appreciated too. By all of us. I think we've tarried long enough. I ought to get these ingredients back to Tome so he can make up this concoction of his. I'll meet you back at the hideaway, all right? All right. And thanks again. I heard you the first time. how Hippocrates is getting on with the moon dew.
How's work on the shielding progressing, Hippocrates? Well, very well indeed. And thanks in no small part to your kind assistance. I was just explaining to Taya how we might best go about preparing the Moondew. And now that we have all the ingredients, we may begin. You can count on me. I've mixed more than a few mysterious concoctions in my time. <laughs> I'm sure you have. What about the shielding itself? Work is underway, under the watchful eyes of Bardolf and Obolus. Apparently, it'll be ready soon. Thank you. All of you. Right then. Jill, would you join me in the infirmary? Many hands make light work and all that. Of course. Oh, and Clive. It was good to talk. We should do it again sometime. It appears our work here is almost at an end. A shame. I was enjoying playing the man of action for once. When both the shielding and the moon do are ready, it will merely be a matter of applying the one to the other. Followed by a rigorous process of testing and retesting, of course. Perhaps someone ought to warn young mid of that. Leave it to me. Thank you, Hippocrates. then. Oh, We're seeing troops amassing at every border. you today, Clive. Your benefactors are a generous lot. You earned this. All yours. Come again. I may have more. Mid, but you'll be pleased to know that work on the shielding is underway. You found something for it? In a manner of speaking, Hippocrates knew of a substance that's highly resistant to heat, a coating that should provide the protection you need. He's supervising the construction and testing of the shielding as we speak. Brilliant! I knew you wouldn't let me down. Don't thank me. I'm just the errand boy. Right then, better start working out how to bolt all these bits together. To the Black Hammer! You know, when I got into the smithing game, I thought I'd be making swords and shields, not thermal bleeding didgeridoo dars. Displacement stacks. Same difference. Whatever you call it, I ain't putting it together in here. It's cramped enough as it is. Let's take this outside. Mid, you get all the parts lined up on the deck. I'll take care of the rest. On my way! Oh, and bring me the biggest salmon you can find. This is gonna require some precision wallabing. <laughs>
is finished. Is finally finished. Thank fuck for that. I'll be feeling my hammer arm for weeks. Thank you, Clive, Blackthorn, everyone. That's one down and just three more to go. I'm sorry. Oh, didn't I tell you? The Enterprise has four mithril engines, and we'll be needing a displacement stack for each. You don't mean... <laughs> don't worry. Now they've got a finished one to work off, my gang in Canva can build the rest. Good luck to them, I say. Right, I'm off to get a sling for this elbow. Any other work comes in, keep it to yourselves, eh? What's the matter? Nothing. Just... daydreaming. Thinking about the Enterprise sailing off over the horizon to shores unknown. Searching for a land untouched by the Blight. Just like me and my dad planned. So if the worst came to the worst, and every scrap of soil in the twins turned black, we might still have a chance. That's what she was meant to be. You see, one last chance just in case we needed it. But now she's so close to being finished, I've realized I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be just a lifeboat for us to cling to if things get desperate. I want... I want people to sail aboard her by choice, not from the lack of it. In a world where we're not just trying to survive, but where we can actually live. I'm working on that. And I'll do everything I can to get you what you want. <laughs> Don't you always? All right. My mind's made up. As soon as the Enterprise is fit to sail, I'm putting her under your command. Sod our plans. I'm trusting in yours. Are you sure about this? Something tells me it's what my dad would have wanted. He'd be proud of you. You, um... You were gonna visit his grave, weren't you? I was. And you can come too, now that your little project is finished. Right. There's just one thing I need to finish up first. Won't be a mo. All right. I'll let Otto know you're coming. Meet us in the mess when you're ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Mid told me she was building a ship. All right, Clive. Astrix. Mid finished sending half the Idaway tropes in across the twins, has she? I swear, that girl'd do anything to put off visiting her old dad's grave. No excuses now, though, eh? Not quite. She said there was one final thing she had to take care of. I'm sure she'll be finished soon enough. She said that? In those words? She... Did, yes. Clive. Were you born yesterday or something? There is no thing. She'll probably be halfway to Canva by now. Oh, mid. I might still be able to catch her. Have you seen Mid? Yep. In a boat. Going that way. <sighs> then I'm too late. Mm, you in a hurry at all, are ya? Oh, I offered to take her across, but she wouldn't wait. Just paid for a dinghy and rode off. Oars going like the clappers. <laughs> Got some life in her, ain't she? But anyway, I was on my way up to see you, as it happens. Got a letter for you. Urgent, by the sound of it. One of your uncle's men said I was to hand it to you in person, post-bleeding haste. And you're here now. Thank you, Oberleth. Don't mention it. What tidings, uncle?
troubling Kamva. Well, I'll need someone to keep an eye on Med. So what? Mid got us to do all the dirty work and then just sailed off into the sunset? It, uh, seems that way. Well, nothing we can do about it now. But next time you plan on visiting Sid, you might want to tie her to something before you suggest it. Ah, oh, don't be so hard on her. Gotta admit, the dirty work was kind of fun. Everyone pitching in, all that bollocks. Just like when we built this place. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, we all set to head to the old hideaway. I could do with getting to Canva pretty sharpish. Wouldn't do to keep Lord Rosfield of the Seven High Houses waiting now, would it? Not after he asked for me personally. Gav will be leaving with me. Will you mind the place while we're gone? You can count on me. Just be sure we'll give Sid and the others my regards. All right. Oh, by the way, Jill will be joining us too. She's got some things to take care of, but she'll meet us there. I hope she's telling the truth at least. Sid, I remember what you told me. But if no one is listening to what you have to say, you may as well not say it. But I will say this, old friend. Hugo Kuka is gone. His shadow looms over us no longer. It's a pity the Phoenix can't be in two places at once. If he'd have been with us, maybe he could have done something for the lost. Not even the Phoenix can bring people back from the dead. Life has a beginning and an end. So we must live while we have the chance. Slaves to the crystals, but as free men. May we join you? Lady Karen, what a pleasant surprise. I thought I'd drop by and see how you were all doing before heading off to restock my supplies. It wasn't the most scenic view back then, but it were never as bad as this. I know. The blight marches on. And soon, there will be no escaping sights like these. So our mission remains unchanged. We cannot stop until every Mother Crystal is gone, and their thirst for ether with them. The only one that remains in Storm is Drake's tail in the Crystalline Dominion. Our next target. We're going to Twinside. 
It's the capital of the Empire these days. I wouldn't like to think how tightly guarded they've got the place. Not that that'll stop you, but we do well to scout it out before you go charging in. We would indeed. If you're off to the Dominion, you can take this great lump with you. <laughs> Good. Oh, I am sorry. Have you forgotten you're the most wanted man in the Twins? I thought you might like to disguise yourselves as the attendants of a travelling trader, assuming you've no better ideas. You wanted to buy yourself some tools, didn't you? Well, now's your chance. <laughs> You're letting me go with them? Oh, thanks, <laughs> Nan. Stop that, you break me bones, you great galoot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a caravan that runs back and forth between the Dominion and the Boklad markets. It's managed by the Merchants Guild. Just show them Goots's traders pass and you'll be on your way. It'll be a damn sight less risky than footing it the length of the Crystal Road. That's for sure. Thank you, Karen. And glad to have you with us, Goot. Oh, oh, okay then. I'll get me things and I'll meet you there. See yous down in Bucklad! Get off! Me poor fingers! <laughs> Jill, you're with me. Understood. And Gav? Already on my way, Captain. Be careful. Aren't I always? Do you see that, Sid? Your protégé's making a proper little outlaw of himself. How are you feeling? Better. Thanks to Taya. I'm glad to hear it. And Toggle helped too. Thin you, boy. This used to be a trade route for merchants crossing the scars. Till the Republic laid a new road wide enough to let wagons pass. And all official traffic moved there. Leaving this one for those living outside the law. Indeed. I doubt we'll be the only outlaws on the trail today. Really? It's as bad as that? 
Oh, why? There's trouble up ahead. And too much of it for us to handle. I take it there's danger on the road. Oh, what about this fearsome looking fellow? You think he'd be equal to the task? Oh, no doubt. Assuming he's willing to hear us out. Well met, friend. My brother and I have been tasked with finding a merchant's missing cart. You seen it by any chance? How does a merchant misplace his cart? Oh, the man's a coward. When he thought goblins might come a-snarling, he ran. Leaving his livelihood abandoned in the pass. He sent the two of us to fetch it, but it's gone. Now, I'm not much of a thinker. But I know the work of thieves when I see it. My brother's right on all accounts. And by my estimation, the bastards are lying in wait just down the road. We may have seen our share of action, true, but we've not got the skill in arms to boldly brave an ambush. You, however, have the look of a man who needn't fear a band of backwater ruffians. What do you say? Will you help us out? Chances are they'll come for you either way. But if you promise to lend us a hand, at least you'll pocket a reward for your troubles. Well, if I'm going to have to deal with them anyway... You've clearly got a fine head on those broad shoulders. We're lucky you came along. Now, hoping to make a heavy purse in Boklad, our merchant friend loaded his cart with as much as it would carry. Reckon he won't be forking over the rest of our fee if we don't find those goods. So, while you're seeing to those bandits, you keep your eyes open. All right. Just don't expect me to drag the cart out of there myself. No, no. Uh, you can leave the cart to us. You just put an end to those bandits and point us in the right direction. You do that, we'll take care of the rest. I'm not sure I trust those two. But if there are bandits lying in wait, I should probably take care of them. <laughs> the fly that you lot! We've got guests! These must be our bandits. <laughs> them dealt with. Now, where's that cart? <sighs> Go.
Getting all of this out of here will be a nightmare. Seems we found ourselves the right man for the job, wouldn't you say? Found the cart and didn't leave a single bastard breathing. Our merchant friend will be delighted. And how exactly will he be getting his goods out of here? You leave that to us. After all, it'd be wrong to make such a fine warrior haul cabbages to market. You've done your part. And that's all you need to worry about. Here. It's been a pleasure. Now piss off. There's no need to be so rude, brother. What if we want his help again next time? Ready, girl? Run like the wind. I see the Dalnecks lag behind Rosaria when it comes to bridge building. The fallen ruin should hold, at least. The path continues on the other side. Thanks, girl. So this is Zemeckis. The land of the gods. It's even more impressive than I imagined. I remember being captivated by the story as a child. Long, long ago, man was overcome by avarice and challenged the gods in a bid to win their power. The final battle took place here, at these falls. Or so the legend goes. If anyone ever manages to plumb those depths, perhaps we'll learn if there's any truth to the tale. That the gods emerged victorious and punished man for his defiance by visiting upon him two curses. Dominance in bearers. Tell the truth. I always thought it strange that the dominant and their icons were deemed a curse. Back home, the dominant inherited the throne. They were admired and exalted, not spurned. Whenever I got to that part of the story, I always assumed there must be something I'd misunderstood. You had a lot of storybooks, didn't you? In your room, I mean. When we were young. The old legends were always my favorites. Epic battles between gods and men. Father encouraged me to read as much as I could. He thought it good for my education. You really were a boy like any other, weren't you? <sighs> Just look at this place. It's enough to make you believe the legends are true. I know.
We're not far from Boklad. The road will be busier up ahead. And we'll have to keep our wits about us. <laughs> Something wrong? Nothing. It's nothing. See the reports are true, Father. You have surrendered the throne to Olivier. I have. Emperor Olivier shall rebuild the Holy Empire of Sambre. How is he to rule an empire? He is but a boy. I shall advise him until he comes of age. Father, please. Or for as long as I am able. The empire we seek to build needs young blood to rule. And I can think of none better suited to the task. There is other news, Dion. Hugo Kupka is dead, and Drake's Fang destroyed. The pillars of the Republic have fallen. Ere long, the Imperial banner shall fly over every city in storm. And then, Valisthea. All shall bow before their Emperor. Father, these are the words of a tyrant. They are the words of a god. The Emperor, whom I gladly serve, great Grieker, made flesh. Turn to your camp, Dion, and ready your forces. It is time to show the world the true power of Sambrek. Father. <laughs> I find you much changed. Is this truly the path you wish to tread? Or are these the ambitions of another? Of Ultima, perhaps? What nonsense is this? I speak my mind, and my mind only. Though I do owe Annabella thanks for reminding me of certain truths. Regarding the nature of nations, of rulers, and of the divine. You will trust the words of this traitress. She betrayed her country. She slew her husband. You have ever been an invaluable servant to Sambrek, Prince Dion. I trust you will continue to serve your emperor in the wars to come. The canker! Silence! Insolent wretch! <clears throat> you will bend the knee. All else is heresy. Sire, forgive me. This audience is over. Come, your radiance. The Rowena Syndicate awaits your pleasure. No, not another meeting with silly old men. They're so boring. I'm hungry, Father. Can't we have luncheon instead?
it pain you that you will not inherit your father's throne? I have suffered worse. <laughs> Count your blessings, Dion. For a baseborn child to be chosen by Bahamut is miracle enough. You have risen high on his wings, but you shall rise no higher, lest your impure blood stain the throne. What do you know of my blood? Markets are to the north. We just need to hug the coast. 